Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Let's all greet one another. God is eternally with you. The title today is The Faith That Confronts Head On. The journey of our lives is commonly compared to the sea. And at times, I say that there is no such compass that will help you to um, guide you in your journey at sea because you never know what can be expected. And at times, it can be a calm sea to sail on or sometimes there can be great winds or slight winds. And it pours down like a storm and then abruptly changes to sunny weather out of nowhere. And it can be the same for our lives. In Harvard University in America, a study was conducted on life trajectories with 268 students as the subjects. So it was a study that traced their lives from their college years at Harvard all the way to the end of their life. And so there was a professor that was in charge of the study for 42 years. And it was Professor George Valent. And so this study continued for 72 years as he looked at these students that lived their lives as university students to the end of their lives. And what he confessed was, I've confirmed that life is so intricate and complex that even the standard of science may feel breathless in trying to measure them. That was the conclusion that he came to. So to that extent, our life can be filled with various events that are unexpected. We don't know what will happen. And in today's passage, there's a scene where Jesus and his disciples suddenly encounter a windstorm. So they thought that once you believe in Jesus Christ, life would be like sailing on a calm sea. But in the scripture, they suddenly meet a very strong windstorm. And what happens then? they become very taken aback. There can be sudden windstorms um, with your financial issues, with family and relationship issues, or sudden illnesses. We can encounter various storms such as this. Just because we believe in Jesus doesn't mean that these storms will not take place. And the German Protestant reformer Martin Luther faced various difficulties in life, even difficulties that were life-threatening. Just because he was um, leading the religious reformation. And his friend Philip Melanchthon wrote a letter that he would like to help him if he was in difficulties. And at that time, Martin Luther replied to that letter saying, when have we ever been without problems? The problem is not that we have a problem, but it's having no faith. The storm isn't the problem. The money isn't the problem. The situation isn't the problem. It's about how much do you believe in the Almighty God. It's a problem of faith. What we need the most is faith. So just like today's title, we must have the faith that confronts head on. And 
The difference between the figures of faith um, that we see in the Bible and the people that do not have that faith. is up to whether they had the faith that faced the challenges head on or whether they lived a life that was swayed by the visible circumstances. So among the 12 spies who explored the land of Canaan, we should look to the covenantal faith of Joshua and Caleb. They looked at their situation with the eyes of faith. They believed that the Almighty God is with us, and those were the eyes of faith that they had when they looked at their situation. So what did they say? They said, they are bread for us. The people in Canaan, they are bread for us. We are well able to overcome it. That's what they reported. That's what they reported to Moses. But the Anak giants, they're very large. They're the descendants of the Nephilim, and so they're very large. And so the other spies, they said, they are stronger than us. We seem like grasshoppers to them. They report and say, they are stronger than us. And so the two reports are completely opposite to each other. It's between faith and disbelief. We must not be shaken or intimidated when standing before our visible environment or problems and incidents. That's being deceived. Be only Christ before problems. Just confess and say, even this is solved by Jesus Christ, who is the solution to all problems. So when we have the faith that looks to only Christ, a faith that focuses on the expansion of only the kingdom of God, and a faith that gains new strength through the only the filling of the Holy Spirit, we live a life that is on a completely different level, especially compared to non-believers. And when you possess such head-on faith, the tent of your life expands spiritually and physically. So may all members of Yewan Church confront and overcome any situation with faith in 2024. And so I bless in the name of the Lord that you may have evidence of establishing an eternal partisan in every step of your life. The first point is spiritual perspective. Let's look at verse 35. And Jesus had taught many parables to the great crowd, he asked his disciples to go with him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. While crossing the sea, a great windstorm arose. Even today, the sea So in the scripture, Jesus was crossing the sea with his disciples, and as we read, they faced a great storm. And so when a storm aro arises, it happens very fast and you cannot react to it fast enough. And so all your clothes can get very wet very suddenly. And just like that, that's the same kind of windstorm that Jesus experienced. And even today, the Sea of Galilee often experiences fierce gusts of wind because of its unique geography. And so the Sea of Galilee was originally a lake with a circumference of 53 kilometers and a length of 21 kilometers from north to south and 11 kilometers from east to west. 
And so they call it a sea because of that. But the unusual thing is that it's surrounded by mountains on all sides. And in particular, to the north of the Sea of Galilee is Mount Hermon, which is about uh, 2,800 uh, uh, meters high. And so the water that's in the Sea of Galilee is actually the ice that has melted. And then the cold winds arise um, from below Mount Hermon um, into the Sea of Galilee. And they collide with the warmer air of the lake, creating the strong windstorms. But in today's passage, we can see the urgency of the situation. It wasn't just a breeze, but a very big megaton gale. So it actually filled the boat with seawater at the risk of the boat sinking. And so the disciples, including Peter, who lived there or spent their entire lives at sea as fishermen, they would have faced a lot of storms on their own, and they would be able to get through them on their own. And they tried their best. However, it was to no avail. And so they urgently woke Jesus up. And so in verse 38, we can see that they asked Jesus, Teacher, do not care that we are perishing. So look at what the disciples said to Jesus. We can see how much unbelief they are within. They call Jesus teacher. So the disciples recognize Jesus as just someone of good teaching. And especially right now, they're about to die, and they're filled with a resentful tone as they ask him why he's not doing anything when they're about to die. They heard all the messages that Jesus gave, and they saw all the works and wonders that Jesus performed, and yet they still did not believe that Jesus was the Creator God. They just thought of Him as a teacher. Why is Christianity the only gospel, and why not the Catholic religion? Because they do not believe Jesus to be God. They serve Jesus' mother, Mary. No other religion believes Jesus to be God. That's why they do not have salvation. And if we look in verse 41, after Jesus calmed the storms, let's look at the reaction of the disciples. It says, they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? They say, Who is this? The disciples are within fear and resentment despite being with the one who has the power of the Creator God. Isn't that just like us who go to church and confess Jesus is the Christ, the solution to all problems? And yet when we face those problems, we fall into resentment and uh, worries. And what about the resentment of their ancestors who encountered the Red Sea after experiencing the miracle of Exodus? They experienced such wondrous works, and when they were faced with the Red Sea, they were so resentful towards Moses. So the disciples are exactly like their ancestors. And they asked, why did you bring, out, bring us out to the wilderness to die when we could have just lived as slaves in Egypt? 
And so what needs to be looked at carefully here is that without faith, we can only live a short-sighted life and always a life that is negative. And we'll always fall into unbelief. You must remember the fact that the more one does not believe in the power of God, the more loss there will be. And among the ten foundations of faith in the seven journeys, what comes first? It's believing in the absolute sovereignty of God. And you must believe that everything is within the sovereignty of God. That's the very first step. And failing to absolutely believe in that power of God is unbelief. Now, our walk of faith starts to waver the moment we begin to doubt. And without faith, we start to crumble on our own. And that's what the disciples of the scripture were like today. And our faith is determined when such storms come. We need to go through things like church construction and things like missions. Because you won't be able to do those things without faith. You don't believe in God. Why would you go to do missions? Why would you embrace the 237 nations? You won't be interested at all in those things. And only when you face storms and problems will you come to the conclusion and answer. And that's why God allows those things. It's a test from God. Do you truly have the faith? Do you have faith for missions? Do you really have faith for evangelism and saving the souls? Do you have faith for the revival of the church? That's why storms have to come. Only then we can see how sturdy you are. A plant biologist conducted a research on barley. And unlike other grains that are sown in spring and harvested in autumn, barley and wheat are sown in autumn and during the cold winter. And so farmers are careful not to trample on their barley to prevent the leaves or roots from being damaged, as they worry it might freeze to death during the winter. And so this plant biologist decided to experiment by sowing barley in spring just like the other grains and harvesting it in autumn. And so the experiment showed that the barley grew well and its fruits were abundant. However, the issues arose when examining the inside of the fruits. It was completely empty, which is really interesting. It's the same grain. And it still grew exactly like the other grains, but it was empty with the fruits. And so while fighting the harsh winter, that's when the barley is able to really bear fruits as it endures and fights against the harsh conditions. And so it's the same for our walk of faith. The more difficulties and storms we face, the stronger our faith becomes. And so if you go into unbelief and complain and resentment, that's just a loss for you. Because the church will continue to move to the 237 nations. And I hope you remember that there is always a reason behind hardships. And we're looking at Psalm 119, verse 71. The author of the book confesses this about the benefit of sufferings. It says, It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. We're able to get closer to God. The word that we would have never looked at, the prayer that we would have never done, the evangelism that we would have never done. 
but through those、um, problems and hardships, we're able to recognize what God wants. And so the windstorms of our life become God's channel for our spiritual maturity. It's God's channel. And Apostle Paul confesses this in Romans chapter five, verses three to four. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. So interpret your problems and events from this kind of spiritual perspective. You must have the spiritual perspective. And may you have the clear assurance that you will not be shaken, regardless of whatever windstorm co that comes your way. Absolutely, those windstorms cannot shake you or destroy your faith. You must have assurance. You must ha have assurance in victory. And I bless in the name of the Lord that you believe in God's faithfulness, that He works to make good of all things. And as long as you have a heart of love for God, He will work so that everything is for His good. So it doesn't matter what situations you may face. So I hope you take on the covenantal challenges and have the evidence to boldly stand as main figure of the covenant fulfillment. Number two is only Jesus. In the scripture, we can see that unlike the disciples' urgency, Jesus was asleep during the windstorm. Was Jesus someone that did not get enough sleep that he he would have to sleep through such situations? Or is he the kind of person to sleep through such windstorms, especially when it's such a hectic situation where the disciples are contemplating life or death, and it's just a small boat, but he was asleep. And the disciples tried their best, mobilized every possible method, and they realized it was all hopeless. That was when they woke Jesus up, and they made an outcry to save them because they were about to die. And it is a relief that at least at the very last minute they searched for Jesus, even though before that they used all their all every possible method. And the fact that you lived your life through your hardships and how you wanted, but now you're seated here at church, that's a relief as well. And your lives could be similar to this. You might live every single day how you want and only search Jesus when you're at a dead end. That's why our daily life is important. If you have a deep relationship with Jesus that you confront, that you confirm every single day, then you'll be able to have the faith that can overcome any circumstance and the faith that confronts head on. It's about whether you have the relationship and communication every single day to those kind of people. No matter what problem comes, they do not care about it. They just confront those problems head on. And I've never lost to a problem. I've never thought I should give up. I always confront them head on. And there's never anything that hasn't worked out. Everything that I confronted head on, it all worked out. And therefore, what you should not lose hold of, no matter how big or small the storm of life may be, is to always enjoy the fact that Jesus Christ is always with us. You must always enjoy that. Do not give any excuses. Just absolutely enjoy this. It's a very simple thing. And in Isaiah chapter forty-one, verse eleven, it clearly states, "Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand."
It's a very clear and specific promise that God gave to us. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 11. I hope you truly concentrate on that word. And a famous um, golf player said that through the anxieties as they go from hole to hole during their um, competitions, they, they meditate on this word, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 11. So you should also hold on to this word. Because you are not able to enjoy this mystery of being with God, you cannot help but be discouraged and despaired and go into fear when you're faced with problems. Only when you stand firmly within, with, with Emmanuel and oneness can you have the faith of confronting head on. Verse 39 reads, And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. So Jesus woke up to the urgent screams of the disciples and rebuked the sea with the divine authority. And right after Jesus said, peace, be still, it immediately became calm, as if there was never a storm to begin with. The megaton-like storm turned into a megaton silence. That's the gospel. This is the faith. This is the event that showed Jesus is the Christ, and the event that showed Jesus is God. Because Jesus is the one who came with the flesh and blood. And he is God. It's not always the baby that's always seen to be within the embrace of Mary. Jesus is God. Jesus is the one who reigns over the universe and brings all creations to subjection. And if we look at the original text, the word rebuke is written as epitomesin. And this term is actually used when referring to casting out demons. And it is an uncompromising term. There's no compromise. So there is no compromise when it comes to Satan. There is no compromise when it comes to unbelief. And we will further discuss this next Sunday. And Jesus was on his way to tell the heavenly gospel to a region of Gentiles that is located across the sea. So Jesus cast out the force of darkness that were disturbing his ministry. No matter how close someone may be, no matter if it's your family, if they are within unbelief, I hope you are also able to cast out the force of darkness. Of course, do not outrightly. You shouldn't say to your husband or wife, um, you shouldn't cast out demons in front of your husband or wife. But if you say, it's my loving husband or wife, and so you just need to absolutely listen to them and embrace them, then that will perish both of you. It will end in disaster for the two of you if you just listen and obey to whatever your partner might be saying. So just inside of yourself, just cast out that Satan. Make that resolution within yourself. Because you shouldn't yield when it comes to faith. It might be comfortable at the time, but before God, you will completely perish. And this is the part that showed that Jesus is God himself who has all the authority of heaven and earth. Jesus is God. That's why he's the solution to all problems. Let's look at verse 40. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? So after calming the sea and the windstorm, Jesus says to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? 
So Jesus saw the event of the storm as a problem of faith. So look at your own problems and your own storms as a problem of faith. It's not about that problem or, or this per person or that person, but it's the fact that God is testing your faith. Jesus, who has all the authority of heaven and earth, is with them. He's on the boat with them. And that Jesus is with you right now as the Holy Spirit. That's why you're the temple and that's why you're here to give worship. It's the same thing. So you also can calm the sea. The sea and the storm is not the problem. It's a problem of your faith. So who are you resenting? And who are you being envious of? Then that person does not have God. Jesus is with you right now. Why are you losing hold of that fact? The moment we lose hold of only, that's when we lose our way. We change the direction of our life. Pastor Oswald Chambers said this, when we pray, we must not lose Jesus because we are so engrossed in prayer. What does it mean? What we must truly hold on to while we live our walk of faith is the spiritual essence. There's a clear difference between Christianity and the world's religions. World, worldly religion is focused on the content of the founder's teachings. This is what Muhammad said. But Christianity is different. We say what Jesus said is important, but Jesus himself is more important. Because we are not saved by the words of Jesus, but we are saved because of Jesus himself. That's the difference between Christianity or the gospel and worldly religion. His words are important, but Jesus is more important. Jesus is the one that saved me. And we must not lose hold of the fact that Jesus is with us right now. The disciples lost hold of who Jesus was. That's why they are saying other things. They are saying useless things and they are running errands for Satan because they did not confirm who Jesus really was. So, Yewon yeah, Church believers really become only Jesus. And if you feel like, I want to meet with someone more regularly because what they're saying is really filling me with grace, that's because they are only Jesus. And so I bless in the name of the Lord to be 24 and 25 and eternally with Jesus Christ, the answer to all life problems. This is the conclusion. There's a very famous person named J.C. Penney, who's also known as the king of American department stores. And the person was once asked by a friend, Penny, how did you achieve such great success? And instead of elaborating on this success, Penny responded in two sentences, because of poverty and because of Christ. Those are the two sentences that Penny said. I succeeded because of poverty and because of Christ. Do you understand? Although great life windstorms and hardships and adversities can come our way, he was able to confront head on because he had the solution of Jesus Christ. There are many times we face great windstorms of life without warning, but if you have the faith that confronts those head on, there's no problem. Because problems will always come. Various problems will always come. At the beginning of the passage, who was the one that suggested crossing the sea? It was Jesus. 
And if Jesus said, let's cross the sea, that means Jesus is taking responsibility. If Jesus told us, go to the 237 nations and do missions and evangelism, then we will go. We do not have anything. We have nothing. But we just follow the word and Jesus is the one that will fulfill it. That's how I have lived my life up until now. Whether you believe it or not, that's up to you. Jesus is the one that holds the keys to our lives. All of our worries, concerns, anxieties, we can completely be free of those things, no matter what problems we face. I hope you enjoy peace because of Christ and enjoy complete freedom because of Christ. And I bless all members of Year One Church to realistically enjoy the blessing of being with Christ and become individuals of absolute faith who enlarge the tent of your spiritual and physical life. Let us pray. Living Father God, please allow our Year One family to believe in the Almighty God. You came as the Holy Spirit and allowed us to believe in you and you gave us an immense grace. Please do not let us be shaken before our problems, but let us be able to confront head on. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.